Hi scholars, it's Mrs. G. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you are well rested and you're ready to learn more about how we can take care of our earth. Uh, you might notice something different about me today. Yes, Mrs. G is wearing her glasses. Uh, Mrs. G has been staring at the computer and working a whole lot, um, reading on her computer for these lessons. So Mrs. G actually needs to wear her glasses. So I figured that since a lot of you wear glasses and you look so super cute in your glasses that Mrs. G will join you and wear her glasses today, okay? So I hope you don't mind. Um, all right, so yesterday we learned about garbage and landfills. Do you remember? And we learned about how people on Earth creates the trash on our planet, right? And we also learned what happens to all of the things we throw away as garbage, right? Where does those garbage, where does that garbage go? Do you remember? ends up in a landfill, right? Today, you're going to hear a read aloud about the natural resources that come from the earth, okay? Natural resources are things found in nature, like land, water, and air, okay? And those things are super valuable, which means super important to people, okay? People use natural resources every single day. For example, if you think of maybe water, that is a natural resource, right? We use water every day, we drink water every day, hopefully. We maybe do our laundry every other day or every weekend, and that takes water, right? And we use water to wash dishes, right? And so, and other things, and did you know that water is also to make medicine? So it's super important that we take care of our water, right, and our land and our air, okay? And that is why we're talking about taking care of the earth. Um, in today's Read Aloud, I want you to listen carefully to find out more about natural resources and the different ways that people use them, okay? And I also want you to remember that, remember, we're using our imaginations, right? So we are pretending that it's not really Mrs. G talking to you. It's Mother Earth talking to you, okay? So we're going to use our wonderful imaginations and we're going to pretend that the Earth is talking to us. It'd be really cool if actually Mother Earth could really talk to us, huh? <laughs> All right, let me just scroll this up a little bit so we're here, okay? All right, here she goes. Remember, it's Mother Earth, not Mrs. G. Earth here again. I always like to start by showing you a picture of me just to remind you how beautiful, amazing, and magnificent I am. Everything people need in order to live happy and healthy is right here on good old earth. Okay, you might be able to see some continents on good old earth, right? If you look here, you might be able to see some. See if you can point some out. See if you can remember. It's a little different angle, so it might be tough, but you can see. Okay, see the big brown area at the bottom of this picture? So right here, okay? That's North Africa. It is almost completely covered by the Sahara Desert, which is the biggest desert and one of the driest, hottest places on Earth. You won't find too many people living in the Sahara Desert, but that does not mean that nobody lives there. It is possible to live in the desert, but there are very few natural resources, like water in the desert, which makes it very difficult for people to live there. Let's talk a bit more about natural resources for a minute. Natural resources are things you can find in nature, outside, underground, underwater, or even in the sky. Natural resources are not made by people. Natural resources are part of me, good old earth. There are two natural resources in this picture. Can you guess what they are? So Mrs. G's talking now. So when you look at this picture, there are two natural resources. Can you guess what they are? Think about that. All right, here's Mother Earth talking. I'll give you a hint. One is wet and the other is wood. Water and trees are two examples of natural resources that are very important and valuable to people. As I just said, one natural resource is water. Of course, one way we use water is to drink, just as it is. Other things we drink like juice, soda, and tea also contain water. How else does water act as a resource? We use water for baths, washing dishes, brushing our teeth, doing laundry, 
cooking, and watering the garden where we grow food. The list goes on. Trees are natural resources too. This illustration shows just a few things that come from or are made of trees. What else is made from trees? Wood is probably the first thing that jumps into your mind. Wood for houses, furniture, pencils, baseball bats, and a million other things. Paper is also made from trees. Everything made out of paper comes from trees, including your notebook napkins, cereal, and other cardboard boxes, and the posters on the wall in your classroom. This is a pretty picture of trees, but I actually wanted to point out something else, the blue sky above the trees. Trees are also important because of their connection to another natural resource in the sky, air. You really can't see air, but it's all around you and everything else on Earth. Did you know that trees actually help keep the air clean and fresh for you to breathe? Amazing, right? All plants help clean the air, but trees are the biggest and best air cleaners. They take in dirty air and put out nice, fresh oxygen, which is the gas your body needs to breathe in to stay alive. The more trees there are, the cleaner the air will be. If the air is too dirty though, even the trees will get sick. There are other important natural resources too. I am going to zip through these pretty quickly though, just to give you an idea of the kinds of natural resources you can find scattered around, on, or inside good old earth. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you more about them over the next few days. This picture was taken on a farm. What do you see? What do you see? You can call it dirt if you want, but farmers call it soil. Soil is a natural resource and it's where farmers plant their crops. Soil is made of partly of the decayed or rotten parts of dead plants and creatures. Worms help to turn the dead things into new soil. It takes about 1,000 years to make one inch of good soil. Without soil, you wouldn't have plants or vegetables. Here is a school of fish. A school is another name for like a group of fish. Fish are important natural resources too. Why? Well, because some people and animals eat them. That's why. In fact, some animals eat nothing but fish. Do you have any idea what these are? The one on the left is called coal. Mrs. G talking now. We learned about coal, do you remember? This is coal right here on the left, coal, okay? The one on the right is oil. Coal and oil are natural resources that come from inside the earth. Coal and oil can be used to make energy, electricity, or fuel to make cars run. So now you know what natural resources are. And I'll tell you this, you people sure are clever. Do you remember that word clever? You people are sure are clever because you've figured out how to turn all these natural resources like water, trees, air, and the soil on land into many things you need. Over the next several days, I'll teach you how to conserve. Conserve. Conserve means to protect or save, okay? Over the next several days, I'll teach you how to conserve these natural resources as a way to help take care of the earth. I'll also teach you that using some natural resources too much can actually hurt the earth. And none of us want that, right? All right, so that is your lesson on natural resources. Sorry, Mrs. G paused there for a second. I almost had something drop on the floor. So natural resources, okay? So I have your assessment here that's up already. Mrs. G can find it. I had it up, yes I did. All right. Your exit ticket for this lesson for natural resources is name two natural resources that can be used to make energy and fuel. Name two natural resources that can be used to make energy and fuel. And you're just going to write the names down and take a picture and send it to your teacher, okay?
That is it for natural resources. Tomorrow we have about, we have two lessons. Mr. G's gonna kind of uh, put them together into one, okay? Um, so we can finish the week off, okay? But have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.